So in this video, we're going to go through the basics or the fundamentals of baking. And we're going to see why do we bake. And currently, we're going to use Substance Painter to bake. So we're going to go through certain key fundamentals uh, in sort of theory form. So let's get started. So what we have over here is uh, a picture from Substance Painter itself to explain baking. And what I want to go through is I want to go through the uh, a breakdown of what exactly is around here. So there are some descriptions when it comes to uh, how does actually uh, certain things in Substance Painter. So for example, average normal frontal distance. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much uh, sort of well explained. And uh, I'll just go through a bit more detail or I'll go through it my own, uh, the way I understand things. Right, so let's get started. Uh, so to begin with, uh, what we have is first we have a low res mesh. Now a low res mesh in Maya looks, uh, it's a basic polygon that uh, contains UVs. And this is usually the mesh that people use in game engines. Uh, at least the final mesh that goes into a game engine. Why? Because games or film, uh, regardless. Because in games, uh, the, since games are run live or every single second, the way you, you may call it, low-res meshes allows the system uh, to run lighter on lighter computation. Now, why do we bake? We bake primarily so that uh, or what exactly is baking? So baking is nothing but transfer of information from one mesh to another, right? And the reason that we bake is so that we get the information uh, to look like this. Uh, this is a high-res beveled mesh that is, has some nice smooth round corners, but actually it just looks uh, the same as a low-res mesh. So even though in real life it would be uh, this low poly or this low res mesh, it would actually look like this beveled edges. So if you come in Maya and we see the difference between a high res and a low res mesh, a low res mesh usually contains the UVs, right? And a high res mesh, uh, the UVs are not so important, so we can uh, we actually don't really need uh, the UVs for a high res mesh. What is important is uh, how the shape is or how it looks like. So here we can clearly see that uh, this is a high-res mesh where there's a nice highlight on the edge. And this is a low-res mesh where there's not really any highlight. So what exactly happens in baking is uh, usually the mesh is on top of each other. Uh, now there's a debate between how should it be above high-res, uh, should it be below high-res. Uh, all that really depends on how you guys, uh, what the object is like. Ideally, if it's roughly around the same length, uh, not too big, not too small, uh, not too small distance away from the high res, it's usually fine. So an average of, uh, an average, you know, would be recommended. So anyway, what we have is we have this high res and this low res mesh sitting exactly on top of each other. And what we have it in theory is uh, this so-called high res mesh, uh, these uh, edges that are curved will be baked on top of this low res mesh, right? And it will bake or the transfer of information will happen via the UVs and that will eventually go into a texture which you would call it like a normal map texture. Yeah. So we're just going to see certain uh, principles or certain differences in the, uh, when it comes to baking or certain things that are important to understand. So of course, first is uh, high res and low res, getting to understand what are their uses. The next one would be uh, something called as understanding what is a virtual envelope, or uh, as I would call it as bounding box distance. So this bounding box distance uh, is usually, uh, it's called frontal distance inside of Substance Painter. And we see that option underneath are uh, uh, bake mesh maps. So for example, let's say you guys have a mesh and you come to this bake mesh map option box underneath your texture set settings. So inside our substance painter, what we have is we have our frontal distance and our rear distance. And inside of Photoshop, when you see a frontal distance, ideally this distance is the one towards the positive axis. Uh, positive axis 
based on your vertex normal right so the next one we want to see is the real distance so what is the real distance real distance is nothing but uh, the distance that goes in the negative side of uh, based on the vertex normal or based on your low res mesh so let's say if this one was going positive based on the vertex normal uh, which I'll just write vertex normal this one is based on the negative side based on the vertex normal itself right so right now this real distance uh, as we see from this illustration right usually it goes inside of the mesh and as compared to the frontal distance this one comes outside of the mesh so that's the main difference between a uh, frontal and real distance uh, one goes in positive space and one goes in negative space next up we need to understand what are non-average normals uh, i already went through it in the previous video but non-average normals essentially uh, the default normals of uh, any particular mesh uh, ideally set to face or uh, as you refer to as non-average um, and these non-average normals uh, ideally just you know sort of go up and on the left and uh, as we can see in this cube itself so if I zoom in, in this cube we see that um, they are sort of going in three different directions One is this direction this direction and this direction and um, this is what we would normally see at um, as in, in a vertex normal and these are just non-average normals now why are they important to understand because uh, non-average normals or average normals which is the next one play a major part in understanding baking or transferring of information from a high res to our low res mesh and that transference of information is done with the three basic fundamentals which I'll go through in a while. So vertex normals and uh, can be divided into two parts or two types, non-average uh, and average. And here we can see that uh, these uh, average normals sort of average out based on uh, the space. Right? Um, so for example, if this if you know this is going up and this is going left, the average of this is just this, right? So this is what is called average normals, right? And then of course this one is not. This is obviously cancelled out. So all this is that represent how the vertex normals appear. So you see that some uh, you may get some black artifacts around in the corner, and uh, and that's because the vertex normals are facing away from the camera, right? And these are very common to get if your mesh is very 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 low res, like a cube for example. Uh, certain problems that come with, uh, not problems, or certain things that happen uh, once we average out our geometry is something we would call as interpolation. And interpolation is always there, it's just that this interpolation changes based on the vertex normal. So for example, we see that these are the two points, let's say point A and this is point B. Interpolation happens between point A and point B. So if point A and point B is, you know, directed towards uh, a average normal, the center is obviously going to be straight. But interpolation, yeah, based on the baking, will interpolate between these guys as well, right? And that's when the normals create some problem when we bake it out, right? So the main thing to understand between interpolation is it is based on point A and point B or the next point from point A to point B, right? And in regards to that, you would, you would see that there's something called as rays when we bake it out, when we bake something out. So rays are the ones that are the so-called transmitters or trans transmitting the information from our high-res mesh to our low-res mesh based in the UV or in a texture map, as you would call it as normal map. Now, rays... Uh, just means that based on the bounding box distance as we mentioned earlier it looks at the frontal distance it looks at the rear distance and says all right so if that's the if that's the frontal distance and if that's the rear distance what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire off a ray from this point going straight down and I'm going to stop at this rear distance suggesting that all right so that's that's pretty deep and that's the limit that I want to go within the mesh so the transfer of knowledge, or tran not, not really transfer of knowledge, uh, 
I don't know why I said that. Uh, the, the transfer of information happens from this high res, which is this code part. So this code part goes towards the low poly mesh, and the low poly mesh, um, that transfer of information happens from the rays based on our bounding box distance, which is, which is called frontal distance and rear distance. And those rays are fired from that distance, but the angle of that ray is dependent on either the non-average normals or if your mesh is average normals, it's based on the average normals, right? And of course, there is artifacts that come uh, when uh, there's some interpolation that goes along, which may be good for us or maybe bad for us. So that's a basic understanding of how actually an object is baked. And ideally, um, this low res mesh contains a UV and the information is stored in a UV or as you would call it a texture map. Now there are many, many types of texture maps or maps per se, or baked mesh maps as Substance Painter would call it. The most common one is a normal map, right? So a normal map, oh, let me just rewrite that. So normal map is the most common one that sort of fakes how light reacts to it. There are other maps such as curvature um, that sort of shows the edges or the bounding edges. And there are many, many, many more. So baking in, sh in short allows us to transfer information from a high res mesh, which is this guy, to our low res mesh in the UV. And the transfer happens by all these important guys. So transfer happens from low res to high res, sorry, from high res to low res, then it uses the it looks at frontal distance, it looks at rear distance, that creates something called as a virtual envelope. And this virtual envelope, the rays are fired from that virtual envelope from point uh, from the frontal distance to the rear distance. In and the line or the angle that is fired is based off the normals that we currently have, which are either non-average normals or average normals. So that's essentially what Substance Painter allows us to do. Now, if you go more into detail, um, for example, inside of Substance Painter, uh, we see these options playing true. For example, we have frontal distance that sort of has, shows us the virtual envelope that goes in the positive axis or the positive side of the vertex normal. And we have something called as max rear distance, which is how deep the ray is fired from. We also have something that has a high definition mesh, which can be added uh, from this option, or it can be minus out from this option. Um, we also have one very important option over here, which is called average normals. Now, this average normals, many people uh, are confused with this, at least if you're a beginner and you're starting out. So what I've prepared is I've actually prepared um, sort of a flow map, so to say, uh, on the different types or the things that are important to understand. So here's just a visual present representation of, let's say this is a high resolution mesh. And um, this once we have a high resolution mesh, the first thing we need to consider uh, in our low poly mesh, if we read topo and you know, go through that process, are the normals itself. Are they non-average in terms of my uh, hardened edge? or are they average in terms of my soften edge? That's the first and the most important fundamental thing to understand. The second is uh, understanding the UVs. Now, I'll go through in detail uh, on the different problems that come uh, with certain types of UVs, uh, but understanding how your UVs are laid out, how your UVs are projected or created is the second most important fundamental. And thirdly, even though people say, Cages are one of the fundamentals. To me, uh, yes, it is. But what's more important is understanding uh, your Baker settings, which uh, can vary from software to software. Now, in Substance Painter, it's called average normals, which in terms of uh, it just has a tick mark, whether it's on or off. And here we see the different results with on or off in our big 
So this average normals, just to clarify, once again, what it actually does is, let's say we have, uh, let me just switch off uh, all of these guys. And uh, let me just open up the uh, average normals, which is this one. Right. So what we have is, uh, we have a low and high poly. So a high poly mesh uh, interformation is transferred to low poly. Uh, we know the uh, frontal and rear distance is calculated. But so what we don't see is when we average normals inside of Substance Painter, right? So once we use Substance Painter option, which is the Baker settings, right? Once we use uh, Substance Painter's feature, I call average normals, what it actually does is it looks through this particular information. So ideally, when we use non-average normals, the problem lies in this particular region. So this particular region, the information is missing. And same goes for all these four sides. This information is lacking. And this is when you, you have problems in your big, or there are certain big problems that actually happen. For example, when we when you see over here, uh, we may see some kind of errors like this, right? Uh, and that's when average normals are off, or when they're using the default average normals. But there are ways to solve that, uh, even though it's off, and you know, not create any problem. There are also other problems like this that come up uh, when we create uh, when we use non-average normals, and there are some problems that come around here. So I'll go through in detail. Uh, why exactly these problems happen in another video but for now you just need to understand that this information is lacking and what Substance Painter allows us to do is it they allow us to sort of fill through that uh, fill through that information using our average normal but the problem with that is interpolation and this interpolation also creates a problem for us around this area where we have skew, uh, skew bakes, right? So there are many problems that comes with uh, certain options, and we'll see how we solve them by understanding the fundamentals. All right. So that should cover uh, whatever I wanted to talk about baking. So just a conclusion would be: baking is nothing but transfer of information uh, from our high poly mesh to our low poly mesh. And the transfer of information is done in the UV, or as you would call it, a texture map. This transfer of, transfer of information reads a couple of things. For example, one of them is namely the frontal distance and the rear distance. And this distance sort of conveys to the painter on how far the way should go, right? How deep should it go, and how far away it should go in the positive side and the negative side. Right. Once that, uh, once that information is conveyed, the angle of the ray matters. So that angle of the ray either is derived from the non-average. For example, the ray may go either straight up, depending on uh, the non-average mesh, or even if you have non-average mesh, Substance Painter allows you to customize that and take, you know, all of these guys and say, you know what, uh, we're going to tell you to do this, right? So we're going to average that out. And that's sort of averaging creates a problem which we would call interpolation. But that is one of the problems that come. And that's one of the options that Substance Painter provides for us to either use average normals inside of Substance or to use uh, average normals from our big mesh maps. Now, when we switch off average normals inside of the baker itself, it doesn't mean that it will uh, make the entire mesh non-average. Actually, it will just reuse what the original normals are. And that's something that not many people may know. So last thing is understanding the vertex normals. And then, of course, uh, for baking, uh, we just need to understand the rays are fired uh, from an angle that is either non-average or average. And that angle determines how the bake results in. And that creates certain problems that we can eventually solve. So that should be it as far as understanding Substance Painter uh, or how the Substance Painter or any baker bake uh, and what exactly baking is and the fundamentals of baking.
right? So see you around in the next video. We'll see you in more details. Bye-bye.